Well, that Maybe sounds good, guys. It sounds really good. Um, there, there are a few things that we're going to talk to you about today, um, things that we've heard, and we might just kind of talk about this a little bit amongst ourselves as well, uh, about things that we could work with you in the short amount of time we have today to kind of help improve your ensemble. Um, we've got a mix of experiences in this group, right? We have some some folks who, who have some jazz experience, and then we have others that have limited or, or just getting started in the game. So not too unlike maybe a high school ensemble or you know a traditional band uh, program might have. Um, so a couple of things that I heard, I wanted to, to get, get your input on this as well, um, you guys. Um, mainly in terms of time and, and the, way, the way that things are played. Those, those are the things that kind of stood out to me that we could we could work on a little bit. From things like how everybody's feeling the time. I was even noticing how um, your bodies were moving or not moving. How you were tapping your feet. Um, if, if it felt like you were kind of uh, sympathetic to the rhythm section and really listening and focusing in with your time and with regards to the rhythm section. How certain notes are attacked. Um, I think the gesture needs to be exaggerated in general in the way that we're feeling. Extremely. Music. Yeah. What, what do you guys think in terms of that? I, I, I agree completely. I think the, that the parts are all there. Everybody's doing the right thing, right? Now it's, it's making more music out of it in the same terms that Professor Swagler is talking about here. This is, this is what Duke Ellington called jungle music and what this is supposed to replicate is Othello moving through the jungle right so that little stomp at the front body how we accent that thing is it takes it out of being this just plain ostinato into a groove and the way you do that is you can't play every note at exactly the same level that Professor Swagler was alluding to. So that would be the first thing I would say. Just, it's not, it's like being able to play at this volume and create intensity. It's what I call grown up music. <laughs> it's what the grown ups play. When, you, when you're grown up, you can play this and play soft, but still be intense. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. And I think for for me, like that intensity comes from, and you've all heard this a thousand times, but the front of the note. Um, and I know we're in bags in the saxophone section, we got bell covers, all that necessary stuff. Um, but aggression is at the beginning of the note, not not the end of the note. So I feel like we can all punch the tops of our notes a little bit harder still. And that doesn't change the dynamic that, that Rick was talking about. You can do that at soft, you can do that at forte, the mezzos, all of them. Um, well, some of that intensity comes from where you play the accented notes. You know, I mean, just obviously the first lick is bah! And then the next notes after that, da 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 you know? That if we play it that way, it takes on a whole different character than bop, ba da ba 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 da da ba ba da ba ba, right? Two and different part of, things. Part of that is is listening and feeling the groove of the drum. Exactly. You, know, you got this bite back beat. So you got ba ba da ba ba, right? So you got the back beat that you have to feel that. You this know? is this is like a swing feel with an underlying kind of tango thing going on in there. It's not just a spang, spang, a lang swing. You call that a swango. I call a, that a swango. A swango. That's what I do. <laughs> now, to the rhythm section, Duke Ellington did not write out rhythm section parts. He wanted the rhythm section to work like in a small group. I see you reading your part. I see you reading your part. You should be making up your own part. Other than that line that you're committed to, other stuff should be happening. 
I wouldn't play spang, spang, lang when it goes into the swing. I would play quarter notes to get it started and then, then wait for the phrases. Because this is one where he really wanted that quarter note there, especially when it goes out of the little ostinato, boom, into that swing section. You're Duke Ellington. Duke Ellington never <laughs> wrote out parts for himself. And you're sitting there watching the music go, nay, 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 you know. You could play whatever. You listen to that phrase and play around it. You're playing fills. They should be, should they relate to Duke Ellington? Yes. But they should be yours. That will help in there to kind of help with that as well. Inside the groove. Yeah. Uh, just to kind of... Uh sum all that together and just talk musically about just the piece in general. It's a short piece, so the word I'm going to say is patience. So even magnifying that patience and maximizing each one, each section, because listening to the important recordings of this, it's very kind of part oriented and, and the drums are, are very straightforward. So maximizing the moment and the impact of this in a smaller time than generally pieces that we're probably used to playing that have some opened up section solos and you know, kind of more improvising. So it's really a, a, com a there's a commercial, even a more commercial element to, to this recording where it's, it's very compartmentalized sections and very direct. So uh, make note of that, uh, the recording. Not saying that we have to do that because Professor Hayden says that some of these recordings can be, can have a time capsule vibe and that's not a, that's a good thing sometimes and that's not a good thing. It's, yeah, it's not always, you know. You, so we want to pay homage to the recordings, but, you know, um, don't tribute band it out. Yeah. 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 So you, you, want to, you want to go beyond being like a robotic, repli trying to replicate the originals. You want, you want to study, you know, those great recordings and, and get the essence, the vibe of, uh, of those recordings. But, you know, in terms of, of solo, especially at, at the, the level that you guys are at now, like the solos, which I know you're improvising your solo, right? That's so, good. Um, you know, and the same thing can be done, you know, in terms of the, of the phrasing that, you know, again, you have to kind of understand the, uh, um, the, the framework that you're working within, but you have a little bit of, of leeway inside of that to, to uh, make some, some gestures just slightly different, you know, like there, there are thousands of ways to play this wrong, you know, but there's not just one way to play it right. You know, there are, there are many ways that you could do this that still sounds like it's honoring the spirit of, of the Ellington, uh, the original arrangement. And yeah, because you want to you wanna represent the composer, in this case, Duke Ellington and, and Billy Strayhorn. And, and Strayhorn was probably more responsible for the orchestration on this than, than writing the actual tune. This is probably more Duke than Billy Strayhorn. I, my feeling is we, we, we owe a certain amount of respect to the composer to try to get it in that pocket of what they were thinking about with the tune. But then we're, we're playing jazz inside there. So if we feel this a little differently than the Ellington band did, that's okay. As long as it's musical. Right now, everything, like I said, seems correct. It, it's just now get, get the musicality out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, what's his name? Dan Daniels? Dan. Can't tell. <laughs> 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 you are the leader of this band, whether you know it or not. The lead trumpet player likes to think he is, but you're really the leader. Now, you've got to be in agreement with that. But you've got, to, you've got to guide these folks through this thing. And I know you're just going, but, you, but it, still, the intensity of that groove is dictated by you. Yeah. Can, we, right? can we work on that? Like yeah. Just, just the loop. So uh, even, like I was mentioning, even the way that you're all feeling this, you know, really focusing on the rhythm section. Um, Zach, you're basically playing the same part as the horns, right, on the front end? Let's just have the rhythm section. You're not really doing much in, in the traditional sense on the beginning of this, right? So it's basically drums and, and bass. Okay, just loop that, that figure. The bum, ba-dum, 
パンパンフルラーループ。Yeah. Uh, two. yeah, that two measures. And everybody feel this. So you're going to feel all four, but really listen to the drums here, or the rhythm section in general, right? And then、uh, we'll get you in on it. So you're going to try to lock in. I want you to try to lock in with this groove, okay? One, two, three, four. Sure that it feels good and that it's, it sounds strong and confident, right?、Um, Can I say one thing? Yeah, go ahead. You know, you, are you guys familiar with、uh, like any kind of fusion music from the 70s, like Weather Report? God bless him, Chick Corea, who just passed.、Uh, Bob i s h n o r k s t e r John McLaughlin, that music. The thing that sells that and makes that music happen is that you can have four or five people playing the same thing and it sounds like one person. That's what this thing has to sound like. You can't be late, you can't be too early, you got to be right with everybody. That's why we're saying listen for the drums and try to lock in with that as much as you can. Take your breath before the downbeat. That you're about to play. Don't go, buh, right? You've got to prep for it. You've got to be ready to go, bam, right on it, right with the drums. Breath and time. Two, three, boom. Like that, right? Play what I play, okay? So you guys keep that loop going. We're just going to play the first note and make sure it's rock solid and that you're focusing on trying to play it together with the rhythm section. Rhythm, two, three, Okay,、um, let's jump into where the trumpets come in, where the brass have the muted. What, you know what, what Ellington called that? When he combined two trumpets and the trombone? That was his, what he called his pep section. It's in dozens of Duke Ellington tunes. It's the way that you've got an ostinato like this going, and all of a sudden you add two trumpets and a trombone, and it takes on a whole new character. He's like, wow, what happened? They're doing the same thing. But he gets more out of it. It's probably Billy Strayhorn.、It、might be Billy Strayhorn that came up with it. Because he was doing most of the orchestrations for the thing. you know? Not that he didn't write stuff. He's right. For this suite, he wrote it quite a bit. So, what, what's the form of this tune? It's a, it's a pretty standard form, even though there's some variation in this arrangement. What kind of tune is this? It's a blues. It's a blues. It's a blues. 
And it starts as a minor blues. This whole section, that's why it's kind of like some of the early jungle pieces that, that Ellington did, where yep. it has like two contrasting sections. In this case, the contrast is it's a minor blues going into a regular blues, right? So when it gets into the sax soli section, now you're back into regular blues. Uh, major key, I guess you could call it, even though it's not technically a major blues. But It's Duke Ellington taking the blues to Carnegie Hall and to Newport Jazz Festival, places where blues hadn't really been played. And he got commissioned to do this thing. You know where this comes from. It's like Shakespeare, right? So he gets commissioned to do this, and, they, and I think they all thought, well, he's going to do some, you know, thing that sounds like Mozart or Beethoven. And he didn't do it. It's blues in every, all 12 of these pieces in this suite. You can find blues in there. Nobody had done that before. This is a blues. So it's, it's got to be, <laughs> to quote a colleague of mine, Ron Carter, it's got to have some stank on it. You got to put some stank on it. You know? So it's got to be greasy. It's just, it's it's like that. It's not it's not that stank. Stanky wanky. All right, let's try let's try it at that section where the well let's set it up. So let's start it from the beginning and then we'll get into it. And yeah, that's the that's Do where you gotta put the stanky wanky get more on high right? hat that section. Too? When the when the trumpets come in, when the brass come in. Ready? You can hammer it as much as you got when that melody comes in. Uh, a two, a one, two, three. better but you got you guys got to put some stank on it and yeah and most of that comes from the plunger right mm -hmm. so and if you're it's all you want to do this almost like you're saying wow wow you know that's what that needs to be it doesn't need to go whoa whoa right make it nasty and loud you know for lack of a better word disgusting you know, but it's got to have that kind of intensity about it, not just da da. Yeah. You know, it's like some creature just walked out of the jungle and scared the hell out of you. You know, that was good though. That's better. Right, right from where they come in. Yeah. One. Hey. A one. A two. A one. A two. A three. Again, you guys can rock those those mutes a little more. Like, wah, 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 get some noise out of it, you know? Like you're walking, like I'm doing a wah-wah pedal, you know? That's where the wah-wah pedal came from, is that. That's what the guitar players are trying to simulate. So you can go, wah, wah, work that plunger on there. <laughs> Do it again. Wah, 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 two, wah, three, wah, Like 
The dam just busted. I can't go, da da, right? That's a moment. Something different just happened. You got to do that. And you can even set it up in front of that. Go, Zada! That's where I'd bury it into the ride symbol and play straight quarter notes. Bam! Lots of hi hat, right? So it swings. Let's go from right there again. Just before it transitions to the four. A again, the whole trumpet melody. Yeah, because you guys can really rock those. That's that was tons better. But man, don't be afraid to just vibrato that thing out, you know. You stopped doing it after the first one. Is it because we started laughing? I was laughing because it was good, not because it was like, oh, this is no. Rocket, man, it sounds so much better, and now it's got, and it's a whole different character and texture in the band. The minute you do that, that's what it's for. Same place. Keep counting. Go ahead, Jared. No, you do it. <laughs> <laughs> One. One. Before we get started, you, you guys need to make the massive balance of the unit. And you can't ever go to the whole Or high hat can balance this. Um, that's, that was, that's it, guys, back there. We'll talk, we'll talk more in a minute, but let's try it again. Let's try it right where the saxes come in. The solo. Yeah. This is B. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. How about we do four before B so you can get that kick Yes. I think, a, I think something, not a fill, but a, like a pressed roll. You know? Cool. Here's four before, did I say B? Yeah. One. Your, your basic volume. That's on the mid range of the horn, so like where the tenors and the, all the other, you know. So, and you should like maybe, maybe like 25% more in presence, right? Here, just saxes. Put some That's stank it. on it. Uh, one, two, three, four. Think so, of it like it's call and response. We got two. We got two. Uh, that was, that was, so, that was so much better. So much better. Uh, yeah, that was better. I, yeah, a lot better. Um, on this line, we just stopped on. Think of it as being, you know, laid back is like the generic term for it, but it's really with attitude. So it might not even be like perfectly in time. But try to follow your lead player, however, however Jacob plays it. You know, here, let me play it. 
Here's the, here's the solo. A two, a one, two. You gotta make sure you're following your lead player though. Alright? So play it in a way that shows here's how we're going. Follow me. You know, and then everybody has to kind of follow suit in terms of how you're doing it. Okay? But in terms of the balance, when you just played it earlier, that's what it should be. You should keep it like that. This is like this is a solely section. You know, so you should all sing as a collective. Okay. It's the tune. It's the tune. Don't be ashamed to bring out the tune. And play the blues. You want to yeah, go? that's all the blues. That singing, and then you know, playing that that one particular lick with attitude. Try it from. Let's do that setup again. So four. Before. That was much better. Four four B. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. One. A two. Uh, one. That was so much better, like tons better. I think you should play this softer. Yes, like, an even too. greater contrast to what's going on. See, we've diverted a little bit from the blues for a moment. I don't know if you noticed, but that transition period out of the solo, there's like this four bar section, and then we go into another 12 bar blues section, but it's, it's like rearranged, and it doesn't really completely sound like the blues, because you've got these different kinds of interesting. It's a trombone cadenza. Yeah. <laughs> But play it even softer, and that means everybody else has to come down to the level. Make it and, and make it vocal like. Make it like you're singing it, not like you're playing da 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 da. da. It's like as if you were singing. Softer, sweet, pretty. All those all adjectives. Is is it okay to get into that four bar section where you're up high? Can we jump right on that? This far before we want to before transition C, before. Uh, before, D. before D. Thank you. Yeah. A two. A one. A two. A three. A four.
Yeah, you've got to go, boom. Don't apologize because you've got to play the last note. Just bang it, man. I'd get up for the piano. <laughs> Make a show out of it. <laughs> hey, on the, that was better, but it could be, again, even softer. You know how you get people to listen to you? And then they lean in. You want people, you want people leaning into that to, yeah. to try to get it. And that, and that other thing is it takes the whole band, the whole band comes down, and what happens when you're done with that? What's the rest of the band do after that? Play loud. And shake those mute, those mutes back there. That's that's what he's going for, like that, that interplay between tension and release, relaxed and not relaxed. Yeah. You know, like some of these clusters. Uh, to where you've, you've got these chords that are all clustered together that creates a certain kind of tension. The tops of your instruments, when you're playing up high, there's a certain kind of stress. When you're playing really loud or when the texture is really full as opposed to really, I mean, you want to really play against that contrast uh, of the different parts of the, the arrangement. Uh, just a quick general thing. When you guys are playing quiet or when you have background parts on a tune like this, not as much vibrato or no vibrato is... is is the way to go about it. And then when you're singing, then you can turn it down. If you listen to the way that band plays, or even like the bass, all, all the great, you know, the bands from that year, like this is 60, right? 57. 57, right. So, um, you know, like Marshall Royal and bass, and, and uh, Johnny Hodges and Paul Gun, uh, what's Gonzalez good? Yep. On this one. Um, you know, so if you listen to how they, they tend to, to do this stuff, usually like when it's more quiet, unless it's a certain kind of um, uh, sax harmony, you know, a lot of times it's more of a straight tone. And then whenever they're out front or where, where there's a clear like main melody on the front, then it's got more of that vibrato going. Yeah, the trumpets on this are uh, Cat Anderson and Clark Terry. Clark Terry's always cutting up. It's always cutting up. So when I say get into those mutes, shaking that, you know, those ex exaggerations are part of the music. Part of it. That's that's a ton better already. You want to play it from the top all the way through? Can I yeah. say like 12 things? You can say I'm gonna be, 15. I'm, I'm going to be real quick. So Danny, in your transitions, make sure you don't get there too soon. So like Professor Hayden uh, urged the press roll lead the press roll like almost like it's gluing the section together right and right before that end of one we don't want to get to the end of one first so there's a, either you leave a big hole or you put a big hole on that one that's really kind of the only real ensemble and of one one of the few so let's make more of that or leave it alone but don't play the end i wouldn't i wouldn't play the end of four as a big like punctuation mark there so super picky but Think of them as either you're gluing the sections together or leaving a hole in, in between. So. This is really seriously quarter note. This is like Ellington almost playing like Basie. You know, like the Basie band would treat it like the rhythm section in Basie band would be primarily quarter notes. That's what that's what Duke wants on this. And everything exact, like we said earlier. You know what I mean? This, the more y'all play as one unit, the, the better the, the thing comes off. Your solo, trumpet solo, that's good. I think you're working too hard. I think you need to stay with more greasy, stanky-wanky blues language and not try to play moving eighth notes in it. It doesn't need that. You got this thing going, you know. You know, ba -bee -ba, like I'm the stuff I'm singing to the piano player. Just a little blues lick. Exactly like that. Exactly. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> one, one thing I was going to say is, you know, you have to switch to playing that lead part. Da, 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 da. Make sure you're, it, build that solo to that spot. Yeah. Like that's the end of your solo, not the beginning of you playing lead on that part. So that should give your solo like a little bit more direction and keep to the bluesy stuff like Rick was saying. Before the trombone solo, Daniel, uh, wah, ba -da 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 -da, wah, wah, wah. 
you could have almost nothing there to goat everybody into playing softer than they were this past time. I'm not saying completely empty, right? But maybe just something very simple. Wait for it this. Like just spacious. Yeah. Uh, mark, a, mark a spot oh, yeah. for change. And when you guys come in after, when the saxes come in after the trombone solo, I think initially I said like bring that out strong and wrong, but he's going to be filling to get back to the, the jungle-ish type stuff. So make that two bar phrase that you have before the bump, 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 a crescendo instead of here I am. Make it, make it gradual. Let's see how that goes. I just really hurt my foot. <laughs> I think we should play the play the whole thing, and 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 now here's the trick. You got to remember everything that we said, right? <laughs> so hopefully everything's in there, and we'll see what happens here. Yeah, some of this is food for thought. Like you got to go home and, yeah. and practice. Like to play the blues, you can't just say, "Oh, now I'm going to play the blues." I mean, you got to you got to you got to get inside that music and kind of. You know, yeah, blues. Stuff. Blues is not a scale. You know, and some of the best blues I've heard in my life has been on one note. You know, BB <laughs> King can make get more out of one note than anybody on the planet when he was alive. But that's you know, it's a feeling more than it is anything, and you've got to listen to it. How many of you own this record with all these sweeps on it? With all the movements of the sweep. It's a great record. The last tune is called uh, Circle of Force. And Duke wrote, wrote it, Duke wrote it for time. the tenor player in yeah. the band. Yeah. And, it, you know, Circle of Force is, you know, dominant seven chords moving. We all know that. Duke wrote the piece. I think Billy Strayhorn had a lot to do with this one as well. It's all 12 keys. It's dominant chord. And it's like, ding, 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 ding. And Paul, <laughs> Paul had to play on it. And it's, it's stunning. It's a stunning, great piece. And guess what other piece is in there, too? You guys Star played Starcross Lover? Lover? Yeah. We haven't done that one this year. There's some great pieces in there. So the, the, yeah. that's the other way, like Jason was saying, is listening to this stuff. Because that's where we're all drawn, what we're saying to you from. Because I've sat and listened to that record. That's why I'm yelling at the piano player. <laughs> He's not listening anymore. I'll tell you more. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see what happens. You want to count it? You got it. Thank you. 
good. And feel better? Feel better about it? Yeah, you should, because that's more like blues. It had some stank on it. That's, that's good. And you can play more. Don't be afraid. You can play all over that, where I'm pointing at you. You're like, come on, come on. <laughs> Just get in there, man. Ba, 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 ba. Here's what you do. You listen to where the orchestration is here, and don't play where they are. They don't need, we don't need more in that range. You need more outside that range. And you can go, bong, da, 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 you know. That's good. Great solo. Yeah. Very nice solo. And you, you know the, you know the trombone thing about seven, how trombone players play seven steps to heaven? <laughs> you play... <laughs> A slide trombone. It's a miracle that you play what you play because you're moving plumbing around. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm at all of trombone players. It's like, you have to, they, I, I get frets all right there. If I get the guitar in tune, I'm probably going to say, you guys are moving around plumbing. Pipes that are under my sink, you know. <laughs> now, to that effect, you're going, fit. Boop, it, boop. You can, you've got so much in there. You know what I mean? When he's, when he's saying, sing, song, come on, sweet. Right? Go home and work with that a little bit, where you can work those notes, where you're holding those notes. But that, you see how the whole band, <laughs> the whole band comes down, because you brought the band down. You did that. And then it's a bigger occurrence when everybody comes back in cranking, right? We have a moment. Yeah. Still good. Really good. 